All right, let's tackle question number two. This one asks us, water vapor is less dense than ice because it gives us a series of choices. I want to pick which one is the best, okay? So I'd like to key in on what I think is the key word here, okay? Key series of words. It says less dense, right? That word dense is of uh, prime importance here. And, and I don't know, maybe um, you might refer to your friend or something like that as being dense. And perhaps you mean they're not that bright or not that quick, right? But when uh, a chemist or a physical scientist talks about dense, um, really what we're referring to is density. Density. And density is one of these uh, intrinsic properties of materials, all right? We, uh, a chemist, when a chem chemist measures density, what they always do is they measure the mass per unit volume of a sample of matter. And there's a series of different units that can potentially be used to express density. I think most commonly for us, We'll talk about density being uh, in, in a measure of grams per milliliter of volumes. And, and you can scale that up, kilograms per cubic meter, kilograms per liter. You could do grams per cubic centimeter if you want to, which is actually the same as this. And the reason being is because one cubic centimeter also equals one milliliter. You probably want to remember that as a conversion factor. Um, you'll, you'll probably see that a, a lot um, along your way in your general chemistry journey. Um, but nonetheless, uh, grams per milliliter is probably our most common unit of density. All right, so we want to explain why water vapor is less dense than ice. Okay, now, reading into this question more, then it seems like maybe it has something to do with our three phases of matter. Perhaps you remember from your high school chemistry class that the most common three phases of matter, this is the phases that materials can exist in, is either A, a solid, B, a liquid, or C, a gas. So these are three common phases of materials. And right here on the slide, I've been able to reproduce textbook drawing. Um, this is on page uh, four, I guess it is, of your textbook right there at the beginning of chapter one. That provides us with a little bit of a pictorial description of what exactly is going on in each of these three phases. And that's actually kind of key and crucial to understand, to, to diagnose uh, the answer for this problem. So let's talk about that real fast. Differences between the phases. Well, the first one we'll consider is the solid phase. In, in the solid phase, um, the object has a fixed shape. Um, generally speaking, solids do not conform to the container shape. Uh, the solid shape is just determined by the solid itself. Um, you know, solid iron, if you think about a, a chunk of iron or steel or something like that, right? It's got its, kind of its, own, it's, got its own shape. It's, it's hard. It's rigid. Um, and they can be you know, different hardnesses. Um, but generally speaking, solids, you know, they, they have their own shape. Um, now, solid, the, the particles, whether they're molecules or atoms in solid, uh, generally are very close together. Um, they're in close proximity to one another. And later on in the semester, in your gen chem journey, you, you'll learn that these atoms or molecules oftentimes will arrange themselves in a complex, repeating, three-dimensional pattern that a chemist might even refer to as a crystal, a crystalline lattice. And that's how certain solids arrange themselves. Others are what's called amorphous, which means they don't have a long range structure, okay? But these particles, the atoms or molecules which make up our solids, um, generally are fairly close together in solids. And that's gonna be important for this problem. We'll get back to that later. Now what about liquids? Liquids are second form of matter, type of matter, state of matter. The liquid will have a varying shape and it's going to conform to the container shape, right? And I think everybody knows this, like water. We're very familiar with liquid water. You pour some in a glass, the water conforms to the shape of the glass, right? That's kind of almost obvious behavior, okay? But what about the particles in liquids? Are they very close together or not? 
turns out that in liquids, the particles which make up the liquid, again, whether they be molecules or atoms, because they're different, they're not the same. Molecules and atoms are different. We'll learn that next chapter. But the particles are still pretty close together, just like the solid. Now, on average, maybe they're not quite as close together as a solid. For most materials, that's the case, okay? But they're still pretty darn close together in the liquid phase, these fundamental particles, the atoms and molecules. But the thing is, in the liquid, because liquids flow, these fundamental particles, molecules or atoms, can flow past one another, and they tend to be somewhat disorganized in the liquid phase. Now let's compare and contrast that with the gas phase. The gas phase is over here on the right. If you've got a sample of matter in the gas phase, it's very, very different. Now, the gas will also conform to the shape of the container, sort of like the liquid, but the difference is in the gas phase, the gas phase atoms or molecules will fill the container fully, whereas with the liquids, it's, it's using under gravity, it settles down to the bottom and fills the bottom of the container. So that's a little bit different with the, the gas. The gas fills the, the container completely. So it doesn't really have any surfaces. And another thing that's really interesting about the gas phase is that chemists model the fundamental atoms or molecules which make up the gas as being in constant random motion. The particles here illustrated by these sort of oranges colored dots are in constant random straight line motion. They bump into each other millions of times every second. Gases exert pressure on the walls of the container as a result because every collision with the wall of container will transfer a moment of inertia and this exerts a pressure. So gases exert a pressure, but they're in constant random straight line motion. And the interesting thing about a gas is that the particles which make up the gas not only are disorganized, but these individual particles are, are quite far apart compared to the solid and the liquid. Now when I say their particles are far apart, it turns out if you do the calculation, the distance between gas molecules and our gas atoms would be measured probably in micrometers, something around a micrometer, we'll say, which is a, a 10 to the minus sixth of a meter. And that sounds like a small distance, okay? But compared to solids and liquids, gas particles are, are like a million times farther apart, okay? So we say particles in a gas, whether they be atoms or molecules, are, they tend to be far apart. And the gas, as a result, is mostly empty space. There's some molecules and atoms in that gas phase, but oh boy, most of it's just empty space. So now, armed with this knowledge, let, let's return to this discussion of the question. We want to explain why water vapor is less dense than ice. So it seems like we are comparing two states of matter here. And I guess we gotta figure out which ones we're comparing first before we move on. Well, water vapor, B-A-P-O-R, is a gas. And ice is our solid phase water, isn't it? And of course, our liquid phase water is you know, what we get out of the tap at our house, right? These are three different forms that water can exist in. It doesn't matter which form it's in, salt, liquid, or gas. It's the same stuff. It's water. Chemists might write the formula H2O. You're probably familiar with that. Whichever phase it's in, it's H2O in water. It consists of, of one atom of oxygen that's going to be bonded to two atoms of hydrogen, H2O, the formula. And it's water in any one of these phases. It just exists in different forms. If water exists as ice, it's a solid. And it turns out the water molecules can, can pack themselves together very closely in a very specific repeating three-dimensional lattice. It's very organized, as it turns out, oftentimes. But if we've got our water vapor, this is gas phase water. We've got our water molecules in constant random straight line motion bumping into each other at a very high temperature usually, okay? 
So these are the differences that we're comparing and contrasting. Now, now why is water vapor less dense? Is it because gas molecules of water have less mass? No, it's not. I just got through saying you can have gas phase water, you can have liquid phase water, you can have ice. If you've got water, you've got H2O. Two atoms of hydrogen bonded to one atom of oxygen. It doesn't matter what form it's in, you've always got that arrangement of atoms. So if you're talking about one molecule, it doesn't matter if it's ice, liquid, or gas, they've all got exactly the same mass. It's water. Every um, the, the, the form of water is, is an important, okay? What about choice B? Molecules in the gas phase are in constant motion. Now, I said that that's true, so this, this answer might look promising, but does that really explain the density difference? No, not really. Because for there to be a difference in density, there has to be a difference in mass per unit volume. And, and okay, I understand that gases have these particles which are in constant random motion until they collide with something, but that really does not explain the density difference at all, does it? So that's not our answer. What about C? Molecules in the gas phase have more kinetic energy than solid. Now this is also true, this business of kinetic energy. I'll abbreviate that KE here, okay? Kinetic energy. It turns out that there's a formula for that. Maybe you kind of remember from your physics class, but it's, it's one half mv squared. So v is the velocity and m is the mass, okay? Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Particles which are in motion or objects which are in motion have this kinetic energy associated with it. It's the energy of motion. You can solve for it by this equation if you want to. We typically aren't going to do that in this class, okay? Now, do gases have more kinetic energy than solids? Yes, because their velocities are higher. The particle velocity in gases are much higher than solids. But is that important to explain the density difference? No, it's not. It's not important. So it doesn't look like that answer is so, so promising. Okay, so I'll cross that one out. But we at least explained what kinetic energy was, just energy of motion, right? important definition, I suppose. What about D? Molecules in the gas phase have more space between them than in solids. Hmm. Seems like that might be a good choice. Maybe, maybe I need to come back to that one because it seems reasonable. Now, why is that one reasonable? Molecules in the gas phase have more space between them than solids. Well, it's certainly true that gases are mostly empty space. And if that's the case, our volume per unit mass may indeed be different. In a solid, we more efficiently pack our molecules into a, a, a smaller space, right? Because the particles are close together and organized. But in that, that gas space, gosh, those molecules have a lot of space between them. It's mostly empty space. So because of that, the density in the gas phase would be expected to be considerably lower. I bet that's going to be our answer here. Now, what about E? Let's make sense of that. Molecules in the gas phase have more potential energy than in solids. Well, that may or may not be true, but, but even if it is, I don't know that it explains our, our density difference. Density is always just a measure of how much mass we pack into a certain volume. So maybe they have more potential energy, but it seems like it's not so important for density. So I think the only reasonable answer here is D. And along the way, we've kind of reviewed our states of matter, our liquid, gas, and solids. So you want to be familiar with the characteristics of each of those. Many of you may already be familiar with that. And you also want to know that, you know, you can have the same substance here we considered water in all three of these phases, solid, liquid, and gas. And if you understand the properties of these different phases and build a good mental model, you know, based on this image right here, basically, that's gonna, I think, start to help you um, as we tackle additional chemical and physical changes throughout this semester, okay? 
we also had a chance to define density here, up here. Density is mass per unit volume, carries units of grams per milliliter often. But again, you could have different, slightly different units in mass and, and volume. You have to look out, be on the lookout for units that you're dealing with in the particular problem. Um, but this is a concept out of chapter one. Um, I think it's an important uh, relationship and equation to remember. And I would guess on the first exam, you're likely to have some sort of question that involves this concept of density. You'll also see it in the lab, so that's something to keep in mind, all right? All right, so this is our purpose of tackling this question. I hope that it was a good review for you.